Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. And that, well, that was your warning. And now, well, now we can begin. This DC's name is David. David Kinney. David is someone that makes really, really bad decisions. Welcome to Dumb Criminal. Now let's get into this backstory. On the 10th of May, 2017, at around 10 a.m. Actually, I don't know how, when it was, but it was in the morning sometime. David and his wife, Cherie, and their kid turned up at Brad's house to drop back a garden utensil. David sent his kid in to go get Brad to tell them that they are outside. So the little kid goes inside and finds the result of their dad's really bad decisions. Kid runs out yelling and screaming, Uncle Brad's dead, Uncle Brad's dead. He's got two GSWs in the back of his head. Parents ring the cops and that's what we pick it up right about now. Story one, suicide. I can't not f***ing believe that. How long you got for Eight, nine years. Really? Oh, yeah. My kids call him uncle. He's supposed to go to the Bahamas with us in August. Your best buds, I think. Yeah. yeah, he's one of my best friends. He met him at coal mining classes years ago, and we just took him and his family. I'm trying not to freak out. I'm That's sorry. Right. I, I can't not to see that. I'm not supposed to see that, man. Where'd she go from the beginning? How you come about coming out here? <laughs> that right there is a weed eater is the whole plant. Okay. You are bringing the weed eater? Yes, sir. We come to the basement door and knock. Because my daughter knocked on the front door. I told her, I said, Cisco, knock on the back door. She went up and knocked on the back door. Door was I went up right behind her. I noticed that the kitchen was scattered. There was stuff all over. But I told my wife, I said, she he with him. Issue with him. He's the last relationship he was in. They, it was pulled off and he hasn't been with anybody ever since. Who was the well, girl? No, it was, it it was, was the guy. guy. Um, he, oh, he uh, was in with the guy? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, who was the guy? He, uh, uh Scott Scotty. something. Scotty. Oh, man. Is there any bad blood there? I think just the regular relationship. The breakup, record and record. Yeah, yeah. He told us about him a couple times. As you can see, this DC's a bloody crybaby, which makes the sound of his bullshit twice as annoying. So old David Crybaby DC is trying to play it off to the cops that Brad was depressed and he shot himself. And now your mind will flicker back to something you learned before. Wasn't it two gunshot wounds? Yes. Yes, yes it was. And by thinking that thought, you're not a DC. So cheers for subbing. So, let's get back to it. So David Crybaby DC has turned up at the cop shop and is about to put his J for genius idea into play. You have a front row. So where we start here? Where were you this Sunday afternoon? Uh -huh. I told my wife, I said, okay, well, you know, we'll run this weed eater down here. My daughter went with us, but she hasn't got to see the puppies yet, so she was all excited about seeing the puppies. You got your phone on you? Yes, sir. Yeah. Take the cruise. David Kenny. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, I told you at the house there, got the delete that stuff. Yes, sir, I have it all right here. Okay. This is the guy that's going to take care of all that for you. Okay. okay. So this is just standard paperwork here. But since it's your phone, it's your personal property, we got to get your consent. Yeah, okay. that's fine. Okay, give me a couple minutes and I'll buzz right through this. Yes, sir. I'll get back to you as quickly as you can. Oh, it's another one of those really bad decisions. Yep, old DC Crybaby is under the belief that they won't find anything on the phone because he's deleted everything. All I can say is the name of this channel, baby. How close were you and Brad? Very close. Did you say you were his best friend? Yes, sir. Yeah, real close. What's your kids calling? Brad? Yeah, he's been there since he's been in high school. Yeah, he's been there since he was Get you now here at the channel we are not saying that men cannot cry well god knows most of us are pussies you see the dc crybaby uses crying as a defense mechanism because people won't challenge him when he's crying so the tech boys finish up stripping the phone and they come across a couple of files that they thought oh oh i wonder why he didn't tell us that well that's because officer it's a secret a secret that this dc would kill for and right about now this detective is about to find out that secret. Yeah. Am I interrupted? No. The difficulty for this cop is, how do I phrase this question? Oh my. 
deep dish of them. Here's some stuff on your fan, it's a little, little questionable. Yes, sir. What, what uh, how close were you and Brad? Very close. How close were you guys? Very, very close. Fun, great. My best friend. Did you guys have sex together? Times in the past were... This is not one of our thought experiments, but if you want to, that's fine with us as well. You know, he's attempted a lot. We've kind of moved around a little bit in the past. It's okay. Hey, look. Uh, I'm being what, what year is it? Well, this is 2017. This is between us, okay? Yes, sir. So now DC's just alerted them to possible motive, as it becomes a very strong motive if his wife doesn't know. Doesn't know. Your wife doesn't know? No, sir. Right. <laughs> and even after all of what's happened, he still wants to keep it from his wife. I don't see that. This is something that she has. Not right now. Yeah, it's now it's the Sow Towers that wreck up DC's story. Yeah. Am I interrupting? No. Yeah, I'll be right back. Yes, sir. It's now that DC Crybaby has a really big problem. <laughs> David? Yes, sir. You got some problems, bud. What's that? Where's your phone putting you at Brad's house the time we get killed? It's past three. And it is this question, or what we call the origin question. Because it is this point that the cop knows that DC is lying and that DCs realize that they're the DCs. If you've watched our Coleman video. Whoa, did you kill her? Was she alive? Um, when, when you left the house this morning, was your wife alive? <laughs> <laughs> uh, right now. Right now, genius, genius here, genius here is shitting his pants right now. I was not there when Brad was. You were at his house. Yes, sir. I'm the murderer. You were there. Oh, God. You know exactly when he was killed. Yes, sir, I know. You were there when he was killed. No, sir, I was not at his house when that man was murdered, sir. I can't... This is the kind of shit that gets people in trouble. Oh, my God, I know. You see, DC crybabies, what these clowns do is that they try to hide behind a shield. They put their hands over their faces and think that gives them comfort. The cop knows this. David? Look at me. Now the cop will shut down DC from doing it without alerting DC that he's onto him. He's a pretty smart cop. Oh my god. You guys really think that? Seriously? You're about to lose everything. You lose your wife, you lose your kids. Okay. This don't have to be the end of your life. A chance to come clean with them. Look, look at me. Look at how you guys look what happened. I didn't shoot. I'm going to tell you. Story number two the other guy. And who did? Tell me what happened. Tell me what happened. It's okay. We'll do this together. Tell me what happened. He showed up. He had another guy with him. This is how smart DC is thinking on the spot. I don't know who he was. I don't know his name. I swear it on everything. It's just old right it's now. Right. What happened next? He went in the garage. David. Yeah, look at me in the eye, but you can tell me what happened next. That was so scared. You heard a gunshot. The guy came running out of the garage and he got into Brad's BMW and then I left. Oh. Okay. <laughs> a slight problem with DC's story number two. You see, Brad's car was packed. Second problem is Brad's car was still at Brad's house. And the third problem for this DC story is neighbors' doorbell cameras would show only one car leaving Brad's after Brad's death. And apparently the driver was crying. The things you need to know. Brad's front seat in the Beamer was full of stuff that he brought from the wedding. The passenger. 
Sir, that guy went back into the BMW. So story two is not looking too good. Your story's bullshit. You look at me right now. This guy is the last guy I'm gonna let you have a chance to tell him the truth. No matter how outlandish it is, working out together. Tell me what happened there. Tell me what happened. You didn't have anybody with it. Sir, I'm telling you. I'm gonna prove that that's a lie. You understand that? We will prove that that's a lie. Hey, but this guy wasn't there. How did he get shot? Tell me what happened. Story number three. We got to the house. Me and Brett. Um, I'm telling you the God on the street. There was another man there. I, I swear to you, God, to you, I do not know his name. We did kind of have a little bit of an argument about me being there. He shot Brad in front of you. Yes, sir. And he was going to shoot me. But I got scared. I didn't know what to do. Oh, God. Here come the tears. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Even the cops thinking, is this crybaby for real? Oh. He knew, he knew what I looked like. He, he, I, my vehicle was there. I did not know what to do. One of the reasons, and it's only just one of the reasons, why DCs are so dumb, is what we call shallow thinking. That is, when they come up with a story that they're making up, they are not able to articulate it meaning that they don't think of the repercussions of any consequences of any points that can be brought against them due to what they say. Instead, what they'll do is just reply with an answer that they think will get them off the hook for that moment in time. And DCs like this DC crybaby do that. And the reason is it's just because they are so fucking dumb. You were right there and watched him shoot Brad. Yes, sir. You can buy this if you called the cops about your friend getting shot. Why did you call the cops? Why did you do this elaborate story? Why did you put... You put your own daughter in that basement with that body. And it's this action, the action of sending his own daughter in so she would find Brad dead on the floor with the two GSWs and not giving a shit about how much that would affect a child truly makes this DC crybaby a disgusting narcissist. You did that. Yes, sir. And you knew he was down there. So, damn it, quit screwing your family. Sir, I am. Tell me what happened. I did not kill him. You knew Brad was dead? And he brought your I daughter? I did not know he was dead. If he didn't think he was a DC before, he certainly does now. I mean, you want to keep spinning this shit, that's fine, David. But I, I'm going to tell you something. Shit getting deep in here. What the f I mean, I mean, no one's going to buy this shit. You're not a guy that's going to run out on his friend when he's getting shot at. That's not you. So the story is bull****. Now that this detective's figured out He's sitting in front of a DC. He's about to cast out what we call the channel a lure. You would have seen smart detectives do this technique before. An example would be the interrogation of Chris Watts, who we will be covering on an upcoming episode on the channel. They predominantly use this technique of casting out a lure, and they do this because they know that this is a much better story than anything that the DC in his mind has come up with before and that's what makes it attractive for the dc to grab hold of and get lured on in hook line and sinker i'm going to tell you something sometimes when bad shit happens people panic okay i got a theory i think it might have been an accident i think that maybe somebody was around I accidentally shot him. They panicked. Didn't think anybody believed him. Was it an accident? Am I right? It's just hard. Mm -hmm. I know it's hard. It's the hardest thing you ever done. Drop, drop all this shit and just let it out. You, Brad deserves it. Brad's family deserves it. Your wife deserves it. Your kids deserve it. Brad, I want me to leave my wife for a while. It's been hard, you know. I love my wife and kids to death. You love Brad too? I did, I mean. Did sometimes you think about leaving your wife, Brad? Okay. I told him numerous times, man, I'm not going to leave my wife. 
I told him, I said, you know, things are going to have to start to stop. With each word, it's just glowing, I did this. I told him, I said, you know, things are going to have to start to stop. What happened? Flip out. Yes, sir. Hit me, smack me around a couple times. If you end all of this now, then I'm, I'm done with you forever. Got real loud with me, you know, kind of like up in my face. He had uh, one of those little derringers. What happened? It's okay. You come this far, cross the line, man. Stop. Come here. Let it go. Tell me what happened next. That brings us to story number four. He had it in his hand, just kind of like waving it at me, you know what I mean? Telling me, you know, you're f up, I'm tired of you, I can't believe you f***ed up my emotions this long and just to call it quits. So I grabbed it. Okay. What happened after you grabbed it? I pushed him. Then what happened? I showed up. How do we know he's telling the truth? That in all of the stories he's said before, this is the only time he didn't cry. Let's stand up. And here we have the next bad decision by this DC. So, I'm Brad, where am I? So we're arguing. Yeah, he actually kind of just come in and was like this, you know, slapping me around. Did you get hurt at all? He picked up the derringer and then he covered me and he just kept waving it. Waving it? Yes, sir. What am I saying? I'm Brad, what am I saying? Piece of s***. Piece of s***. He's waving the gun, then what happens? Do I fall down? No, sir. Then what? He come and he come at Come at you? Yeah. Show me where, where he shot me. Right. On top of the head right there. On top of the head? Yes, sir. You shot him once, he stayed on the ground. Why'd you shoot him again? It was just, it just happened. It just happened. I you felt honest? threatened, man. I really yeah. did. And how do we know that this is a lot? Because this is Brad. Okay, here's my problem, and my problem's with rudimentally balls of physics. He's coming at you, you, you shot, okay, but the bullet's going this way. Yep, this DC is a bona fide genius. It was about this time that DC realized his stories weren't going anywhere, so he asked for a lawyer, which shut the interrogation down. And even after all of these screw-ups in DC's story, the DC crybaby still goes to court and pleads not guilty. So, how did it all end up? It's midday as an accused killer sees his first day in court. David Kinney went before a judge this morning just days after his arrest for the Sunday murder of Brad McGarry. News 9's Kate Davison joins us live now from Belmont County with the latest. Kate. This morning during an arraignment hearing, he's charged with one count of murder, a first degree felony. Mr. Kinney, your honor, is 30 years old. He's married to his wife. He's been married for nine years. We have three children together, ages 14, 13, and 10. On his record, uh, given his history, his ties to the community, bond uh, in the amount of $100,000. The judge overruled that request, instead setting Kenny's bond at $1 million. Oh, you'll love this. DC Crybaby actually made up a fifth story while he was in jail to give to the cops to try and get out. Eventually, his last story to us was that there was some type of altercation between the two of them Sunday afternoon that involved uh, an allegation of money being taken by him. In other words, the deceased was alleging that Mr. Kinney had taken money, and there was some type of discussion, argument, with regard to some uh, sexual relationship that these two guys had for what appears to be an extended period of time. According to Mr. Kinney, the deceased tapped him with that gun. He took that to mean that he was in fear for his life, grabbed the gun. His story to us was that he shot him once, he fell to the floor, and he shot him again as he laid on the floor in the back of the head. The decision follows an emotional eight-day jury trial that ended with a conviction of aggravated murder with a gun specification. News 9's Kate Davison has more. 31-year-old David Kinney sat expressionless while the prosecution and defense made their final remarks in the case. The state of Ohio petitioned Judge Frank Frigiano for life in prison without the possibility for parole. Kinney's defense counsel argued that there is reason to believe Kinney could be a productive and lawful citizen later in life. The jury unanimously found him guilty of aggravated murder, a premeditated execution-style murder, uh, shooting his supposed friend in the back of the head twice. Uh, and again, only Mr. Kenny knows why. If this man was able to do a 
assassin's job to someone he loved and his best friend, what could he do to his enemy or someone who opposed him? Kinney, for his part, did offer a brief apology in court, although he made neither an admission nor did he offer an explanation. I would like to apologize to the Gary family for all the hurt and pain that I put you through and prevent for any of this to happen, and I wish it could all, I could take it all back. I know all the apologies in the world will never bring him back, but I want you to know I truly am sorry for it all. The defendant shall serve life in prison without the possibility of parole, plus three years beyond life in prison. New at 5, the murder of 43-year-old Brad McGarry at his home last year troubled the Bel Air community. Later, David Kinney was found guilty of aggravated murder. Now the case will be shown across the country. News 9's Brittany Grego has more. The McGarry murder case will be featured on an upcoming episode of the... Dumb criminal, yet we've gone national now. To wrap up this episode on the channel Dumb Criminal, I am asking you a question, and that is, can you please let me know of what do you think of my voice and this voice over of Measy Voice from the channel? As if you like this voice, DCA will give me a job. Doesn't pay a lot of money, but at least it's a job, so let me know in the comment section below. And if you don't like my voice, then in the words of a great samurai, Faka, you!